Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson three of the simple series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. Now today we're going to be looking at the Amiga and we're going to be learning how to create a simple image on the screen. We're going to do an 8x8 image first and then we're going to do a larger character image of our Chibiko character. So let's go over to the source code and see what we'll be doing today. Okay, so here's today's source and if we just fire it up and check it actually works because sometimes it doesn't. And if we just press and if we just press W here, here's our little smiley face here. So this is our first example. And then as if that wasn't enough, we will then be doing a more advanced one with a larger character. And this is our Chibico character, though it's actually in the wrong colours there. See, we'll see if we can fix that later, maybe. Okay, so we're going to go over the code here. This is going to be an extension of the Hello World example we did before. In that episode, we learned how to compile a file and load it on an emulator. This time, we're going to learn how to turn the bitmap screen on and get a graphic onto the screen. We are going to rush through it a little bit, though, because I've covered these commands in the previous bitmap example. So this one is just going to be quite quick. I'm going to kind of assume you're going to use this code as is. So I'm just going to discuss briefly the function of each part of the code because it's quite long. So let's make a start. So first we're defining some symbols for the hardware registers we need to use to control the screen. And next we're opening a connection to the operating system because we need the operating system to turn the screen on for us. We're going to be using some RAM areas. These are defined in what's known as chip RAM. This is the memory that's built into the hardware. The extension RAM can't be used for certain functions. So we're defining the name of the graphics library here. We're defining an address of the graphics base here. And we're defining something known as a copper list. This is the sequence of commands that runs every time the screen redraws. And it handles things like the screen memory locations and the colors. So we need the copper list. And we also need the screen memory itself. And this is the image of the screen. And it's got to be in chip RAM. Now, the screen is done in bit planes. The screen is 320 by 200, and there are four bit planes for 16 colors. That means there's a, a full bit plane for bit zero, full bit plane for bit one, full bit plane for bit two, and a full bit plane for bit three. So that's the layout of the screen. If you don't know what a bit plane is, if you think of a 16 color screen, that will need four bits to represent colors zero to 15. A bit plane is where you take all the bit zeros from all the pixels and you store them together, all the bit ones, all the bit twos, and all the bit threes. And with the Amiga, it's the entire width and height of the screen is a single bit plane. And then following down from that is the bit ones, and then the bit twos, the bit threes. So that, that's the layout of the screen. Now we're gonna to have to deal with that when it comes to actually getting our graphics to the screen. Now, before we can worry about the graphics to the screen, first we need to set up our screen. So that's what we're doing here. We're defining the size of the screen. We're defining the bit planes just here. And then we are turning on the screen with these commands here. As I say, I'm only going through these very briefly just to tell you the, the overall function of them. I'm assuming you're not going to want to change them. If you do, then you need to go into the documentation and read all of the details of these commands. But we're going to end up with a nice, simple 16 color screen here. Next, we're going to need to actually set up that copper list. And that's the commands that will actually draw the screen every refresh of the screen image. So these are commands are in a special format. First, we're defining our four bit planes here, and then we're defining our colors. We're actually defining 32 colors here, although we actually only need 16. Maybe I've gone a bit excessive there, but we're defining them all just here. So the first four nibbles here are actually the command, and that's effectively the color number. And this is the red, green, blue part here. And maybe we'll change that later, see if we can get Chibiko looking a bit better than she does at the moment. Okay, once we've done that, we need to wait for vblank and apply that copper list. We read in from this hardware register here, which is the vertical position. And we're just checking to see if we're in vblank and when we are, we return. So when this command completes, vblank's finished and we can apply our copper list, which is this set of commands. And this means that at this point, this is our actual code. So if you were writing your own game or something, this is the part you would want to replace. And this is the part you'd probably want to leave the same with the exception of maybe you'd want some better colors. I'd certainly suggest you do. Okay, so we're now in a position where our screen's set up finally, and we can actually start looking at what we want to draw on the screen. So we're gonna draw a smiley face, uh, a little sm round smiley. The face is gonna be color one. Uh, the eyes are um, color three, I think it is, and the mouth is color two. 
Now, this is an image in bit planes. So it's um, eight pixels wide and eight pixels tall. So there are four, so there are eight lines to our image and there are four bit planes for each line. So this is eight consecutive pixels and this is bit zero, this is bit one, bit two and bit three. Our image is only four colors. So it's only gonna use bit planes zero and bit plane one. And you can see that because these two are all zero. So this bit plane here is effectively the face. And this down here is the mouth and this is the eyes here. So the eyes are in color three, you can tell because that's bit zero and that's bit one. And if bit zero is one, then it must be color three. Whereas here it's color two for the mouth. Okay, so that's our image. Now, when it comes to actually calculating a memory address to draw to the screen, all we need to do is calculate the position in the screen memory for the first bit plane. And then we're gonna to need to shift around for the other bit planes. So effectively what we're doing here is we are taking the screen base, adding a Y line multiplied by 40, cause there's 40 bytes wide of the screen. And that will give us the first bit plane. So this gets screen position will calculate a memory address from an XY position. And that's what we're doing just here. Then what we need to do is we need to draw all four bit planes for the eight lines of our sprite. And that's what we're doing here. So we're loading our bitmap in, that's this thing here. And we're loading each bit plane in. So this is the first bit plane, the bit plane zero. The next one is basically one entire screen width times screen height down. So 200 bytes wide, 200 lines tall, one bit plane down, and then we're doing an offset to two bit planes down for bit plane two, three bit planes down for bit plane three. And so this is effectively reading in all four bytes of one line, and it's writing them to the four bit planes of the screen here. Then, because you'll notice A6 is never being changed in this loop, we are adding 40 bytes, moving down by one line, and we're repeating again for the next line until all eight lines of our smiley are drawn. And that's how we got that little smiley face to the screen. And that, so that's how we did this little smiley face there. So that's not so bad. Now, basically this version isn't too much different. Now, instead of the smiley being defined at the byte level, it's included as a file. If you want to know where you can get such a file, well, I would um, suggest you use my Acrosprite editor. This, this thing here, it's free and it's open source. And it's what I used to create the file for today's example. If you just go to 68,000 Amiga, save raw bitmap, that will save in the format that you need to use for today's example. Now, the get screen pause is exactly the same. The only bit that's changed is this area here, because we've now had to put an extra loop because we're doing multiple bytes along the line as well as going down the line. So because we're doing eight pixels in each byte that we write in, we're dividing by eight here. Our bitmap is 48 pixels wide, 48 pixels tall, but we're doing eight pixels in each one of these iterations, again, doing all four bit planes in one go here. And so we've just got an inner loop here to draw, along the to draw along the line, and then we've got the outer loop here to draw down the line, and that will create our Chibico character there. But before we actually run this and just confirm our Chibico is working, let's just try and fix those colors. So I want the background to be black here, I want color one to be a kind of purple. So let's have eight for the red component, eight for the blue component. This color needs to be cyan, which I believe it is. And then the fourth color needs to be white and we do really don't care about the other colors. So let's just run this here. And if we, there we go, there's our Chibico character and it's in the correct colors now. So that's how we drew our image. As I say, each of these lines going across was just being done by this inner loop here. And then each of the lines going down was being done by this outer loop here. So if you were doing a different image size, you'd just want to change these parameters here. And if you wanted to reposition, you would just change these parameters here before the get screen pause function. That's really hopefully all there is to it. Now, the tricky bit is, of course, getting the screen set up. As I say, I'm not going into any detail here because I think if you were a beginner, the um, screen that I've got set up for here is going to be the best thing for you to get started with. The, the um, Amiga can do bit planes, but you lose half the color depth. So you'd be using eight colors. And I think 16 colors is a much more standard thing that people will be used to if you're working on a system like the Atari ST. And um, these, plat these tutorials are multi-platform tutorials. So the intention is we're doing the same thing on a lot of different systems. So that's why I've chosen the 16 color mode. 
Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Um, please like and subscribe if you have. It helps uh, YouTube with their analytics. They rank videos by how many likes things have. So um, yeah, please, please do that because it helps other people find my content. I hope you've enjoyed this today though and I hope you will um, give Amiga programming a go. But whatever you do, um, take care now and have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.